provato anche il suo. So, we can start uh, uh, talking about how you started. It was difficult for you to become a movie director starting from Australia. Yes, it was. Um, I, I was a film editor at a TV station cutting news, news film. Yeah. And I, wa I always wanted to become a feature film director, but there was no avenue yeah. open for me. Yeah. And I, I saw all these rock clips coming in from overseas. Uh, and um, so I, I started doing them. I was the first person to start doing them in, in Australia. I, I made that industry happen in Australia. And, and what it, was, it was always meant to be like a means to an end. So you started in this field. And what do you like uh, the most? Uh, the, to work uh, making a video or making a movie? Well, Which do you prefer? Well, they're sort of both very different. I mean, it's like making a video is like having a short romance, very short, like yeah. a one-night stand, and, and, make, and making a film is like being married. <laughs> yes, know? I understand. And it's a lot harder to break up, but when, when the but, film finishes, you get a bit depressed, you know? But which is the difference of the language? I know that there is a big difference, but if you have to explain the difference between the two languages, video and movie. Okay, I mean, doing a video is is doing a marketing piece and it's basically doing a commercial yeah. for, for a record. Yeah. It has to be short and sharp, not really tell a story, but get across an emotion visually with the yeah. music and it has to, be, has to marry with the music and be inspired yeah. by the music. Uh, I guess doing a film, uh, you have to involve the audience. The audience has to be, become part of that story. Yeah. Um, so it's more a mental attitude than a technical uh, I think so. I mean, there are, there are a few technical differences. One, the video is cut a lot faster yeah. and doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, but to me, it's more of an emotional thing. Okay. I see in Highlander that the movement of the camera in your cinema is very import important. Uh, which is your secret? Did you use the sky cam or something like yeah, that? Yeah, we, I, I think I used all the devices available. I mean... I must admit, I do like the so-called toys. Um, ah, yeah. We use the sky cam in the wrestling, yeah. which is a wonderful device. In the Madison Square Garden uh, in Madison situation. Square Garden, yes, and uh, it, it allowed me to to show the enormity of the event and then get right into it to a yeah. tight shot of my leading man. Yeah. I use steady cam a lot, and I use a device called the Luma. Luma. Yes, which oh. is a camera on an arm, ah. um, and you can put it anywhere, it's a okay. wonderful, wonderful okay. Ah, the, the scene under the water was made uh, how? Where he's underwater? Um, we filmed that in a swimming pool yeah? in London uh, and we, we dressed it with rocks and seaweed Yeah. and Christopher was weighted down with right. weights, yeah. he could not get to the surface, and he was down there for an hour and a half. Um, and the week beforehand, he learned how to buddy breathe. You know, buddy breathing. Yeah. And you have a frogman down there, also scuba guy. Yeah, yeah. And the guy and Chris would make a signal, and the guy would give him three yeah, presses. Yeah, 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 yeah. He'd go away, and we and I was holding up signs saying, yeah, "Do yeah, it again." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or right. he was very brave doing that because he. Uh, it's a little dangerous because uh, if he coughed or whatever. Yeah. It would have taken the guy about four seconds to get Very to dangerous, him. yes, yes. And he could, he could not get to the surface. I can't understand. He, but uh, he's, he's a lovely chap, Crystal. Yeah. Uh, talking about your first movie, Ranzerbeck, uh, I know that uh, he had not so big success. No. Why? I think the producer, it's quite strange, you know. I mean, I still think Razorback was the right film to do at the time. Mm -hmm. Really? I don't know, it's okay. I think Razorback was the right film to do at the time. However, in, in Force, I, I remember my, me and the producers sitting down after we finished shooting the film, and we said to each other, you know, I don't think anyone wants to see a film about a killer pig. <laughs> the killer so, pig so there, was there was a the fundamental problem with that idea. film. Whether the film is good or bad, no one wanted to see a film about a killer pig. I mean, what yeah. can I say? Anyway, anyway, they gave you a, a so big movie like uh, this one, so expensive. Why, why they gave you so a big movie starting from your first movie who wasn't really uh, No, I mean, big the Ra Razorback was uh, three and a half million and Thailander is 12 million. It's, it ah, is, so, it's quite... Uh, it is quite a jump. And I think uh, someone said to me, how did you feel about that? And I, I felt nervous. 
Mm. Um, I feel nervous when I see any filmmaker doing a large budget film. I feel nervous for them because the responsibility is tenfold. Um, but and it was it was a hard decision to make. But the script for Highlander. And the idea was so good, I couldn't yeah. say no. You yeah. know? And talking about nervous, I yeah. read that you have uh, uh, some kind of concentration of relaxing technique. Uh, is it true? Pacing? Uh, I yes. read uh, in the... I mean, I actually wonder why I do it, but I, I don't stop when, I, when I'm shooting. Yeah? I mean, when I shot Highland, I must have walked a couple of thousand miles because mm. I'm, I always walk either in a circle or a figure eight. Mm. Uh, and maybe maybe it gets more blood up into the brain or something. <laughs> <laughs> so but I, I I do walk a lot and it, it does relax me. Yeah. And it also I walk so fast that nobody can keep up with me, so <laughs> I don't get asked questions and I can think. Okay. If I sit down, then people come up and stop my train of thought. But if I just keep walking, yeah, then people don't come up to me. And it's a it's a matter. It's a way of just because when I'm shooting, I I'm also editing the film in my brain. So. So after I've done a couple of takes or whatever, I go for a walk and yeah. I cut the scene together. Ah, well, and then I work out if I need another shot here and there. Mm. It was difficult to, to, to get Connery in a second role. Uh, what, to convince him to do yeah. it? Well, not really, because I mean, he only really only had seven days. We only had him for seven days and he only um, could have, we could only afford seven days with him. Oh. Uh, so. That was the, and, and that was the role I wanted him for, and he loved the role. Ah, okay. I think I think he felt it um, quite special for him to go back to his homeland and uh, back to Scotland. For that reason. And uh, I mean, maybe 20 years ago, he could have played McLeod. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so I think he felt sort of uh, uh, an empathy with the character in a way. How how was the the feeling into these actors uh, so different, like uh, Lambert and Connery? They mixed uh, well a, together. If, uh, personally, yes. I mean, they, they became quite close friends. Ah, yes. On and off the screen. So the climate was good on the set. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I personally, you know, one of, one of my, um, one of the way I work is that I try to create an atmosphere, um, a, a working atmosphere. Yeah. Where everybody can get on with what they're doing. And we can sit around and, and we can talk and discuss. Yeah. But the, it, I don't I don't like a tense set. I like a relaxed set. Okay. And tell me something about the subject. Why did you choose a, a story about Im immortality? Something that uh, is charming for you. Why this subject is so difficult? Because I remember only Pandora was a movie about. This. Yeah. I mean, I guess immortality. Uh, um, is a dangerous subject to tackle. Yeah. Because uh, you can look at immortality as a, as a greed. Yeah. Um, there have been a number of films, in some respects, about men who want to live forever or yeah. not want to live forever, uh, and they've always been on a dark side because it's been a thing of greed. I don't want to grow yeah. old or whatever. Yeah. This film is not like that. Our character, our hero, is a young, naive, Scottish clansman yeah. back in 1500. Immortality is thrust upon him. He doesn't want it, yeah. and he can't get rid of it. Um, so, I felt that this was a totally different look yeah. at the concept, and it always fascinated me. So you like the story, but you are not particularly 